Good morning. Today um, I'm going to talk about these. Sorry, the lighting here is terrible. Um, these are fragrance lamps or catalyzer lamps, and basically what they are is they use this, which is a um, a piece of stone with a wick. Try and get a bit more light on it. Sorry. Um, and the idea is is that you fill this with the liquid put the stone in light it a flame comes you extinguish the flame after a few minutes and then the wick soaks up the solvent dissolved oil and it's catalyzed i.e. it's just burnt in here and this just keeps itself going it's hot enough it vaporizes the solvent, which in these this case is isopropyl alcohol, and leaves the fragrance oil sort of <coughs> excuse me hanging in the air. The problem, and this is one here that's got the problem. I'm really sorry about the light. Um, is that the wicks clog, and what happens is is that these just get loaded with oil, which which doesn't clear properly and it'll stop working and if I try, let's see if I can just demonstrate this so the, the first sort of thing you notice is that it, it's a bit of a weedy flame when you light it I'll just move that IPA out of the way So as I say, what you will do is you'll leave it running for two or three minutes and then you'll blow the flame out and the lamp will keep going. But what happens is these wicks get contaminated and after five or ten minutes the um, the, 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 the fray, it stops, the, the wick goes cold and it stops. So today I'm going to show you firstly how to cure that problem and I'm going to show you as well as how you can make your own refills for these things because they're expensive. So let's start with the wick. Do remember these are hot generally. Right so we've got a bad wick here and I know it's a bad wick because it's, it's stopped burning. Now do excuse me I'm just going to plug in my macro lens for this. Let's try and line this up. Right, okay. So there we go. So that is the wick. And it is a ceramic of some description with a, a hole, a, a metal retaining clip which serves no purpose other than it just holds it in place. You've got this thing which holds the wick. I'm just trying to just get in. I am sorry about this, I'm not a cameraman, I'm a pest controlling technician. Right, there we go. So these folded, again let's let me try something to point with, uh, what can I use? Oh just when you need something to point with you can never find anything can you? Right this will do, screwdriver. Okay so just, there's one and they just you can do it with your fingernail. They just lift up. Sort of like. Right, you just pull them back. Basically. Don't bend them all the way back. Oh, I've trouble with this macro lens. And me, I'm at a funny angle and I don't have a studio. Okay, you see that? Just bent it back and do the same with the other, the other two. Okay, and then 
you can remove the wick. Now, this is the first problem. Let's try and get the wick there. As this carbonizes, it stops the uptake of liquid or severely reduces it, I should say. So that's the first thing that you encounter, that's the first problem. The second problem is in here. Now, there is, oh, we're just in the middle, can you see that? There is a hole. If that hole gets clogged, it won't work. So it is genuinely, it's a tiny little hole. This metal clip, all it does is it holds the stone onto this little metal frame. And you can, if you wish, it's just held on there. You can remove it. In fact, to that end I'm going to, because I'm going to do this complete. Now, these are a real pain in the arse. There is a... It just goes in there and, and sort of slots in. I'm really sorry about this. It's so difficult trying to do this where I am. I do apologise, this is terrible I know. As I say, I'm not a cameraman, and that's why I don't monetize my videos. They aren't high enough quality, they're more information than they are quality con well editing quality I should say. Just trying to get the bloody focus just right. There. Now those two little that wire just hooks on to there. You have to be very careful, these are so soft as it were. So if I just try and just move it across and if you just manip just right there, the wire. There you go. Just comes apart. So I'll now show you the bits a little bit more closely so you can understand. So you can see what the, what those wires do is they sort of go and just hook under there. It's a bit tight, there's a bit of tension, but that's it and that's what holds the stone in place. You don't really need them, but... Right, blimey. And there's the stone. Okay, so what do we need to do to clean this? Well, there are several things you can try. The one I used to use was putting it in an ultrasonic cleaner with isopropyl alcohol. And I'd leave it running for half an hour, and that would clean it up considerably. But it wasn't perfect, and I discovered a, a, a better method. I'm going to have to go outside to do this, so if you can bear with me, just a few moments, while I go and set the stuff up outside, because I can't really... Can I do it in here? Have I got anything? Let me just think about this for a minute. Okay, I'm going to see if I can set it up to do it in here. Please, bear with me. Right, all I've done folks is I've just secured the wick onto the end of a screw uh, on a stand. Improvisation's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Right, so if we just... If we can just get it to, hopefully... I might have to do this... Alright, okay, yeah, I'm gonna just going to put the macro lens back in. And I shall bring that closer to me. That's probably going to be the easiest way of doing this. Let's just zoom out a little bit. Right, there we are. And you can see it is quite... Um, it, it, it's quite minging. I'm just going to adjust the height of the tripod. 
trying to get a little bit better. Oh, look at that, that's perfect. Right, so what do you do? You take a blow lamp and then you put some heat onto it. Lots and lots of heat. You want it glowing red. Now what you're doing here is you're basically clearing all of the gunk that the isopropyl alcohol can't remove. So if you said you wanted it glowing white hot, you have some idea of what you're trying to achieve. If you can, Oops. then don't touch it now that's going to take a few minutes to cool down so I'm just going to pause the video and once it's cooled we'll be back right a few minutes later and you can see it's a very different looking creature it's back to its original color because we've managed to basically vaporize now you can quite clearly see the hole We've, we've basically vaporised all of the rubbish that was in it. So, now, back to the wick. Okay, this is really quite simple. Take a nice sharp knife and just cut back that so it's just back to nice, clean, fresh cotton. Don't have to cut off much. Just check the other end. Okay. This is this is the fiddly part. What you have to do now is try and get those two ends into that hole. And the sort of best way I've found of doing it is to bring them up closely together and just start to just manipulate the end and then as it goes in just just twist the in the same direction that you were twisting the wicks together so I'm just keep it in frame for you Twist, gentle pressure, twist, twist, gentle pressure, much more pressure. These wicks are quite hard. And we can be relatively sure that that's now in place. Now, you can now slide that okay so that's back on 
Right, apologies there. The uh, <laughs> card in the camcorder filled. So, as I was saying, so we've, we've put this back on and then now these three little they just push back and all they do is they just secure the wick so just push it up against and just give a bit of gentle pressure and just bend them back they are quite fragile and it's very easy to snap them off and sometimes I find just using my thumb is thumbnail is, is as effective okay so so long as that is now and I'm not pulling tight but you don't really have to put that metal thing back on and sometimes it, it's a bigger pain in the arse to do it as I say sometimes this is really easy and sometimes it's a nightmare so I'm just going to start with the first one into the groove, a bit like Madonna and it's, it's this, this is where it gets difficult trying to get that So you can see what you have to do. You have to get that into there and slide it along. And as I say, sometimes it's a bigger pain to do this than it's worth. I'm going to struggle to do it on camera because I've got the macro lens on and trying to hold it steady enough is nigh on impossible. I will just zoom out. Right. As you can see, hooks just under there. It isn't completely necessary, but so there is your now rejuvenated wick. So the next thing I want to talk about is the fuel. Now this is the oil and this is fragrance oil and this is genuine Ashley and Burwood fragrance oil. These are from eBay and these are about £3 a piece. Now when you buy, and I don't have any to show you here because I'm not spending the money on it. When you buy the genuine Ashley and Burwood fragrance oils that are already diluted, i.e. you just add them into your lamp you're paying about I think eight or nine pound for I think half a litre which is a lot it's a lot of money now what do they use well they use this this is IPA or propanol or isopropyl alcohol or as the Americans sometimes call it rubbing alcohol however be careful if you use the term rubbing alcohol because rubbing alcohol is typically only 70% pure. What you need is 99.9% .9 pure. As you can see, propan to isopropanol, rubbing alcohol, propyl alcohol, propanol. That's what you want. Okay, 99.9%. .9 so, now I've already got a bottle of my sort of already done fresh linen here which is nearly empty so I'm going to top it up now talk to you again briefly about these some of them and I don't know whether there's any scientific fact in this but let's just say it's experience some of them are more potent than others and what I mean by that is whereas I used to use one jar Per one litre or one 12 mil, 12 mil bottle per one litre and I discovered that sometimes the wick would clog up very very quickly 
and I couldn't understand why and it was because I was using far too much of this. So now I tend to start at about a th perhaps a quarter or a third of a bottle. Now all I'm going to do here because I don't want to contaminate this bottle, I want this bottle clean so I don't want to contaminate it with oil. Once you have the oily stuff in it the bottle will smell forever. So this is a clean bottle of IPA and I'm going to add to my already sort of depleted bottle of and all I've just taken the label off and stuck it on the bottle. So there's a little top tip for you. So I've, I've probably used about perhaps a third of a bottle there and then I'm just going to top it up with neat isopropyl alcohol. Now the beauty of this is that if you put this in your lamp and you think well it doesn't smell particularly potent just add, start to add, a half a capful or a capful of neat oil into your bottle of IPA. Give it a damn good shake like so. Thoroughly good shake. And what you're doing is you're just dissolving the oil in the alcohol. And there is a bottle of a one litre bottle of uh, fresh fragrance for your Ashley and Burwood lamp. Um, and that's it. And I hope you found this useful, instructional, entertaining. And if you haven't, nah, I don't care.